Okay. All right. Teresa and Kimberly, we're going to go live and I'm going to go to my Facebook page and make sure that I can go ahead and share this and take it off the, um, the settings. Such an exciting day today. Such an yeah. exciting day today. Mm -hmm. We got to go out here and bring the people in. Bring them in, bring them in. I can't wait to hear about your day today. <laughs> I know it's been an exciting day. I know it has to be an exciting day. Oh my God. Mm. I'm trying to wait on you to so I can share. I, I did. I did it. And I'm getting ready to share. Okay. Um, in Messenger to people. <laughs> What is it? It's not. You don't see? Oh, yes. We're on. We're on. We're on. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Happy it Monday. is our day. Happy it Monday. is Black Girl Chit Chat Day. And we are on episode number 10. And what I'm trying to do now is let people know that we are in the room, that we are in the room, that we are in the room. Uh, what does it feel like, Teresa? Does it feel like we've been here um, 10 episodes? No, it doesn't. And it was all because we was up at night chit-chatting. <laughs> and we always do. <laughs> uh, now it's just natural. It's just natural. It's natural. If people now. really knew all the chitting chatting that we would do, they'd be very, very surprised at all our chitting and chatting. Oh, yeah. Really good. This is good. This is good. This is good. So hello, everybody. How y'all doing today? We hope everybody all right. Kings, queens, y'all feeling all right today? Uh, are you able to see who we may have with us today? Can you see? Are you able to see, Teresa? Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm Because you know I, my ADHD won't let me be great and my multitasking won't let me be great. And people were laughing at me today. They was like, you got a new look. I said, baby, by tomorrow, I might not look like this. Yeah. This is my look for the day. Demetrius Maya said, feeling good. That's good to know, sir. Are you coming to the protest rally tomorrow at the Capitol? Yeah. Mr. Maya, are you coming? That's a yes, that's a no, that's a maybe so. Who that, Demetrius? Uh-huh. I'm trying to see if he's going to come out and join us tomorrow. He's going to beat us there. Oh, he, you're right. He probably wouldn't beat us there. You know, he come in and out. Um. Yes, he does. What was I getting ready to do? Um, he said, of course, I want to make sure that you're going to be there. Uh -oh. You know, I might need some security in my head, you know, the way things going around here. Yeah, I might be getting an extra amount of all kind of threats and, you know, the people been trying to bother me. Yeah, I feel you on the threats. I get them too. So we used to that. So what I was told is when you get in threat, that means that you're doing something right. Chad, they play too much. <laughs> They play way too much for me, and they better stop playing so much. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Um, I need to let's go ahead and get started though. We ain't gonna waste people's time. We gotta talk about some good stuff. We got a lot of good things to talk about today. Um, I I guru of cultural things is not on, so she's gonna she's on, but she's not on y'all. So we're gonna go ahead and just Hold it down. So, Teresa, Teresa, yes. Teresa, Teresa, Teresa. What? Let's talk about for a second. Let me bring y'all up to speed on some of the stuff that's going on as it relates to hacking of uh, all of our systems. Because you know we had the Colonial Pipeline hacking. Hello, Towns. It's good to see you with us. Mm -hmm. um, so you know we had that, and you know that kind of shut down gas pumps and had people acting like they were in mass hysteria. Everybody running to the to the uh, gas pumps. Hello, Felicia. Glad to have you back again this week. Uh, and so then the next thing, you know, they had the meat plant that was hacked and then meat prices skyrocketed. And so now they, they're they saying, um, Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm is saying now they're worried that they're going to hack into our energy what? supplies because, you know, they found out that some of the people who had hacked uh the colonial pipeline were actually Russians and they got paid millions of dollars in cryptocurrency. So today, uh -huh. I was, you know, the little shows and Newsmax and they said, is the Biden administration doing a good enough job trying to make sure that we get hackers? And I said, now let's don't do that. 
Because what we know is over the past five years alone, yeah. uh, cyber security attacks, cyber attacks have been on the increase. Mm -hmm. And in 2019, it was so high that they didn't think it was going to get higher in 2020. And it did when it went up 42% from 2019. So this has been a constant thing of them mm -hmm. trying to hack our um, different systems in the United States. And the people that's been behind most of the hacking has been Russia right. and China. Russia right. being, you know, used to be little friends, footsie, you know, Trump and, you know, Putin was footsie oh. friends. And then you have China that's just a big boss. Now, mm -hmm. you know, Donald Trump didn't like China. That's the one thing I agree with him as far as their politics and uh the economy because he was trying to make sure that the United States competed on the uh -huh. same level and that everything was not made in China. So we, right. we got to give him some credit because he was trying to make sure for whatever reason he wanted to do it, we <laughs> had to make sure uh, that China does not have a complete stronghold on the United States. We got to, we got to acknowledge that's that true. because I mean, uh -huh. that's now, true. let's just talk about it because everything is made in China. We better be making some things in the United States of America. That's why I like the whole Biden build back better. And we try to get some manufacturing done in this country right here. But that's, that's the right. only good thing Trump halfway did because he didn't even do that right. Because then he started, you know, trying that's to right. make it a racial ethnic thing as opposed to him just supposed to be talking about not allowing China to have complete control of the United States. Not to mention how many bonds alone that China owns of the United mm. States. Yeah, we gotta have some real conversations. Oh, the hair was all in my face. Y'all see, I got the hair there. But um, <laughs> yeah, um, we gotta have some real conversations about where we are with China, where we are with Russia, and all of that. So, where are you all on that, everybody? Hello, uh, Jan Shepard. Hello, woman of God. <laughs> so, uh, Brian Reynolds, I love to always see her. I love her. her. Love her. Love but love what do y'all think about that? This whole cyber attacks, infrastructure, because what's going to happen if they really hit our power grids and rip across the country, like get into our energy supply? We saw we'll in the dark for a little while with that gas. Uh -huh. So, what's going to happen if they get to our electricity, nuclear? We, have, we need to go. I mean, what, what, what is we going to do? What is we, we need to buy candles. We need to buy candles. Candles, you're going to be. Yeah, she might some doggone candles. We gonna be walking around the hills, get some barbecue grills. It's called survival. We're in a survival state right now. Oh, okay. You think this whole economy, this whole country, this system could operate on candles? No, I ain't say the system could. I'm just saying uh, we can. You know what? I want y'all. It was a it was a mini, <laughs> not mini series, a document, not documentary. A series, a regular series called Revolution. I don't know if y'all recall that some years back, probably about four or five years ago, it was a series called Revolution. Mm -hmm. It came on and only lasted like two good seasons. But the reason why I started watching that series, so y'all go back and look. I don't know if it's Netflix or Hulu or whatever. Revolution. Mm -hmm. Part of it was filmed in my subdivision. And the other part was filmed at the Georgia State Capitol. And at that time, I was a legislator. And I was living here, and I was just blown away that they were taping revolution in my subdivision. I mean, every day I came home, the trust was kind of like blocking the subdivision a little bit. But anyway, that series talked about, showed how what would happen if there was no power, no electricity. Mm -hmm. Like, all of a sudden, people were on the highways, at home, doing everything. And all of a sudden, all the cell phones went down. No calling. The home phones went down. Because remember, they plug into the wall as well, unless you got one of them. So right. everything, communication just shut down. So I'm just saying, it was a very scary thing because, you know, people don't have contingency plans. Like, what happens if the power go out? Well, we know how to get to our family members. Do we have a meeting point, a place? What if you live in different states? How are you going to get together if you don't have any cell phones? Mm -hmm. So those hackers know that. Okay. Anyway, where are you on that? Mm. Why are we still? Why do we have so many? Did you want to come on and talk to us for a minute? Why? Uh, let me see your link. Why? Why we're waiting on Kimberly Carter because you're celebrating one year of picket speech. Let me send you the link. Hold on for a second. Yeah. Talk, talk, to, talk, Teresa. Talk for a minute, honey. Talk. Okay. Talk about anything. Just talk. What are we talking about? There go Kimberly. Kimberly. Oh, she's here. Wait. 
Hi, Kimberlyn. We see you. Hello, DeAndre. I'm still trying to figure this thing out. I'm trying to mug. Y'all know I can't multitask good. Uh-uh. 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 You got me running the dog gone. Uh. Take him a jig him. Okay, so we- Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Pardon my tardiness. It's always so good to see you. Great to see you, Kimberlyn. Y'all like my lipstick? Yes. What color is that, darling? Wow, uh-huh. it's this matte. It's this Fenty. This Fenty matte and this, you know, in, in this um, uh, purple pink, uh, in this purple color because, you know, today is happy heavenly birthday to the one and only Prince Rogers Nelson. Um, Purple rain, baby, purple rain. Purple rain. Bro, what's going on with this bro? I need to put my bonnet back on. Uh, yeah, you can work. Look, you can put your bonnet on. You uh, got to look. Your you love to see your bonnet. I want to see this Fenty bonnet in. It's very nice. Public. I want to see it on the uh, here on the little Zoom thing. Hey, oh. Whatever we got, our podcast. Oh. Okay, I need to go and get it to, to put it on because honey, it keeps these, it keeps these, it has got my edges, um, satin lines. You know, when a, when a girl gets over 30, how do you know the edges, how do you get the edges together? So, you know, I understand that bonnet life, I, I'm in that bonnet life because you're in that bonnet life. Right, thank you for the bonnet life. Okay. You see the coils, you see the coils. Yeah, you are some kind of funny. But hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. What we so got? What, 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 what well, let's you, talk about Prince for a second. Let's just, anybody have no, any break? No, what, you saying, what were you saying before I got here? We were talking about the hackers. We were talking about the hackers, cyber, cyber uh, attacks all across the country. And what would happen if they got to our energy supply across the board? Like, what in the world would we do? And I was oh, telling no. about a show, Revolution and all that. But y'all, this is serious. I mean, we need to really look at this. And them dogs on Russians out here. Well, alleged I, Russians out here, you know, doing ransoms for cryptocurrency. Yeah. Uh-huh. This cryptocurrency, this cryptocurrency. Well, baby, when they kidnapped me, I sure hope y'all got y'all Doge coins and Ethereums and all that together. Baby, they kidnap you. We come up. We gonna be, boom, you know. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Now it took him a while to get to um, Osama bin Laden. Remember how long it took them to get Osama bin Laden? But had they had a team of all black women, baby, Osama would have been caught a long time ago. We don't play like that. We would burn their whole. We would burn everything down, honey. Let them try to take. Again, you know, honey, if they get me, you know. With this here crypto thing, honey. If they kidnap me, honey, depending we're on where they hold me, we're not gonna kidnap. We're gonna bring another guest on for one second, y'all. We're gonna bring the yeah, I'm, 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 I'm serious. If they kidnap me, depending on where they kidnap me. Now, if I'm over yeah. in Riyadh or Dubai or something like that, y'all ain't got to come get me because I'm tired of over here anyway. So I'm good. Oh, man. So, I don't know. You don't want to be in that dog on hair. DeAndre Pickett. Look at hey, Dr. 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 Oh, hi, DeAndre. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well, congratulations on your one year show. First of all, first what, of all, what are you drinking? What are you drinking? What are you drinking? What are you drinking? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what you're drinking. That's- I just know I poured a bottle and whatever was in that bottle. I know it's wine. Uh huh. But you don't even know what you're drinking. No, is that? but it's good. In, the, in this season, it's good. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. When I tell you. On your year anniversary. Listen, I tell you, I, people don't understand. That's why I keep, like, when I laugh at y'all every, every Monday, because people don't understand how hard it is every week to come up with topics. They're trying to stay relevant and see y'all. See y'all got just a little easier because there's three of y'all. I oh. have to do it by myself and got to find people to come, and so that gets tiring. So there's times where I do, um, I'll do a uh, a replay uh-huh. uh, episode because uh, <laughs> just, just, just trying to do it every week is tiring. But 
Uh, nice. It's it's been fun. It's been a blessing. The the people that have come on and have joined the the experience, um, it's just been amazing. And I've I've been blessed to have done it. Um, we we technically are in our second season, but y'all don't count that first season because that's like the pilot season, you know. <laughs> So I don't know really to count that, but we've been blessed to have the people again, people like Arrington Foster and Darren D. Henson from the family business. And we've had, um, uh, shout, uh, I forgot the what, uh, uh, ooh. It's because of you, I know what that show is now. You know, you had him, I didn't know what the word he was talking about. Then David was like, you've got to watch family business. I was like, what is family good. business? Is I have so not watch that gangster movie. And oh my God. Like I love it. Okay. Family I business is the business. Now, granted, I only got through like three, four episodes, but I'm going to go back and try to get through the rest. That's a lot for you. That's a lot for you. That is a lot for me. That's a lot for you. Sometimes. Um, but I wanted to, because I don't want to, I don't want to hijack you all's show. Um, but I, you know, you all were talking about, uh, before I came on, you were talking about the hacking and the conversation piece. And I know that it's, had, it's it's similar, but it's not. You know, we talk about the you know the way that um, the system is and the way people have. I say, I keep going back again mm -hmm. to the movie Antebellum. Mm -hmm. And let's I, ask everybody if they saw that devilish movie. And I keep saying, if you've never seen that movie, and you talk and you think about how. You know, society really. You, you got to be very careful, especially as Black people. Sometimes, unfortunately, we are we're being targeted because we are speaking truth to power, and because of that, there are people who genuinely do not like you, and there are people who genuinely do not like and care about you, and there are people, especially after forty five has been in office, have now become emblazed and bold enough to now not only let you know they don't like you, but they will come and let you know by coming to you, and mm -hmm. so. We are seeing all we're doing is just kind of seeing life uh, come full circle again, just in a different way. Uh, and so my fear is, is that we're not educating ourselves enough and we're not putting on, putting enough platforms out there. I don't care. I don't care. You know how many people, you know, come on my platform. I'm going to keep putting it out there because we have to keep educating our people. Uh, and that's why it's, it's heavily important that people come out even to that rally tomorrow at noon because we have to let these crazy people. I ain't gonna talk crazy on y'all show. But we gotta come let these crazy people know that we mean business. We're not gonna keep playing with them. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll we, let the we, church say amen. But continue to do what you're doing, black girls on his on you doing your black girl chatting. Uh, Kimberly, keep being as quirky and crazy as you are every week, every Monday night. Uh, Did you say she was crazy? Just, we know we know Kimberly crazy. <laughs> we know that. She uh, really is. <laughs> Teresa, continue to be your I'm, I'm listening, heart. but I'm also, I mean, I thank you very much. I'm listening, but I'm also paying attention to my lips and my highlighter. So whatever you're saying, thank you. And see, that's why, and that's why she's crazy. That's why. <laughs> so she's gonna, I love like that thinking, baby. She's gonna make I sure she's gonna talk about fifty so much that Rihanna gonna have to be compelled to come to black. And the person. moment that she becomes, she gonna manifest it. She manifest the moment it. that she comes on there, please send her to pick it speaks. I would love to have her as a sponsor. God bless your life, ladies. Be wonderful. Be great. I love you all. Goodbye, Y'all yeah. can catch him every Yes. But he usually comes break. on at 7 o'clock p.m. on Seven. Mondays, and you're coming back when? I'll, I'll be back. The, I'll be back. So I'm taking a break July and August, and then I'm coming back in September um, right after Labor Day, and you will then be able to not only just have us on social media, we'll now be on Roku as well. So be able to find us on Roku as well. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you know, the ladies here, they're, sometimes they're 8 o'clock, sometimes they're 9 o'clock. So if you're free, when they're not on at 9 o'clock, you can come over to Five Guys on Live, where I am the new fifth guy in this year's seat. So come join us on Five Guys on Live. We talk foolishness. Don't be uh, on here advertising your shows. Listen, you got me on here, so I might as well. Ah. <laughs> so, ah. See you later. We appreciate you. Plug, plug, plug. <laughs> you done got him oh, on. No, now, now the people can't see my hashtag. What is your hashtag, love? Bonnet okay. life. Oh. Hi, Terry. Hi, mother. Uh, Felicia says she loves Miss Kimberly. Honey, you can't do anything with her. Hi, yeah, Felicia. Oh, yes, Miss Kimberly is something, honey. She's something. Oh, me too.
Yes. And she's glistening. She's, you know, that Fenty makes her glow, honey. She glows mm -hmm. with the, you know, the Fenty. Okay, y'all. So what we're going to talk about now. Can y'all hear my prayer in the background? Can y'all hear my prints in the background? Yes. Yeah, are we getting us uh, blocked where we can't be on uh, social media? Because, you know, they come and get us. The doggone Facebook police and uh, YouTube police like to come get us with the music. Mm -hmm. But I do want to hear a little bit of Prince. I love him. I know, God bless right? his soul. Hello. Purple Ray. Purple Ray. I only want to see it. You know, we don't talk enough. And, you know, and that's one of the things that we don't talk enough about. Um, this is, of course, um, you know, Black June is Black Music Month. And we have so many amazing and incredible artists to celebrate. But one of the things that we don't talk about enough um, when we talk about artists, and, and that is mental health. You know, people who are artsy fartsy and very creative, um, like yours truly, you know, um, we have a lot of exceptionalities. You know, I have adult ADHD, you know, um, things like that, you know. We deal with depression. We deal with other challenges. Okay, now I don't know where everyone went to. My I did. That. I did that. She's playing with the thing. You're showcased. You're talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. I don't. I don't want to be showcased. I want to be. In Lord the, have mercy. I had you talking. I was showcasing you. No, I want to be with my sister. Um, you know what I love about Prince? That's that's Nikki playing in the background. I and, hear you know, Prince. You know he was. Um, what I loved about him, you know, he was brought up in the Pentecostal church, and you hear. You know, we talk about how much the church influenced music. Of course, when we look at Aretha Franklin, Fantasia, Luther Vandross, Whitney Houston, all of those amazing artists. But Prince is an artist that we don't talk enough about when we hear, you know, how much. I mean, like Dee is talking about Purple Rain might as well be a gospel song. Purple Rain, Purple Rain. Woo! You want to see you. I want to see you. Church, honey. It is the church of the purple one. And you, know, you just can never forget how, you know, how this bridge that has brought us over has mm -hmm. influenced culture in so many ways. Yeah. Well, we thank you for sharing that. So, oh my God, little Nikki, huh? darling Nikki. Ooh. You know that, you know that pop, um, the Reverend Paul, Bishop Paul Morton, let it rain. That's oh, right. that's, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I listen to it all the time. It amazes me. You know what you are. You, <laughs> you know, it amazes me how prudish people have become now about songs like WAP, and you they know, pretending like they, they pretend they, they, they like they are. Prudish. You know, when my parents allowed me to go to a concert with a black man at a G string masturbating. On a brass bed. So, I mean, if you went to a Prince Please, concert, I said, rah, rah. I mean, when you said what was going on at a Prince concert, I guess you guys have never been to a Prince concert. No, I'm just saying, Jesus, I'm right. when you think about it like that, when you think mm -hmm. about it like that, concert. Mm -hmm. you know, My and you know what, you all, we, we can not talk about these young people music ever, 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 ever again. You know, the whole show. <laughs> the right. Hey, Shanita, so good. Shanita's back, right. Campbell Lamb. Yeah, Shanita's back. Oh, my best friend is. But no, I'm saying that is the whole show in, in lingerie. Um, you know. Hi, Kai. Blue Blue said hello to everybody. Who's making love to my old lady? You know, Why are you making love? Well, how about this? How about my favorite? Now is people what? are all like, oh, we can't have what? Oh, we can't have what? Honey, Luke did it for me. Luke and the two live crew got Ooh. me through many days from that whether I'm it. scrubbing the ground or popping that. Whatever, or throwing that, whatever, and you know, can't say all the words that y'all want. But I can't get my way in my days of dupes and all that. So, you know, you know, we, we really was wrong with you, too, though. Yeah, we was wrong with you. We were young, wrong with you, actually. Tetra, mm -hmm. we were. All of go all the way back, even to your uh, parents' um, music as well. Come on, oh now. my god, you got it. She, she said, My mother wouldn't let me go and see my late husband in concert. Okay. 
<laughs> and Charlita wants you to know that your <laughs> lips are popping. Your lips are popping. She's wearing oh. Fenty, honey. Fenty. Fenty. Oh, oh, purple. Fenty. Is it purple? This is the matte finish. Normally, I wear something a little bit more creamy, but this is the matte finish. Yeah, this is the um, lip paint matte. Yes, and she's doing it in, you know, celebration of Prince. Yes. Yes, I have on my purple. I have on, um, I don't know if people can see. See, there's a brooch and everything. See, if you didn't let me shot, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to highlight you for a second so everybody can see your full attire. Here you go, y'all. Show it, it Lawrence Kimberly. Kimberly. Oh. But friends, oh yeah, you're doing that. Yeah, it's a little blingy blingy. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> lovely. You look lovely. And you look lovely. Also, and, and my orchid is, is also uh, purple. Oh, I, started I, my raspberry I started wearing my raspberry beret since I can't wear my bonnet. Oh, honey, we would have because, honey, you can't tell the difference someday between a beret and a bonnet. Isn't yeah. that remember that preacher who who had his wife on there like a couple of months ago? Remember, oh, yeah, I yeah. remember the people's names. Oh, no, no. Who he had a bonnet though, Darren Jackson. Well, she said it was beret, she said it wasn't no doggone bonnet. So, I'm just oh. saying, like, you can't. And if I didn't know it was a beret, I thought it was a bonnet. The girl oh, said really? it was in the race. Oh, uh, she, was, she was lined up for war. She was in battle mode. Uh -uh. Yeah, you know, know who I'm talking about? What's the name of the people that was? Uh, y'all said Derek. Y'all were pouring a little tea. Yes, Derek. Um, yeah, Derek. I heard you pouring a little tea about the orange warlock. Um, a little earlier, you were talking about Trump. And so since we're on the topic, did y'all see the tea that Paula White's husband poured on her baby, baby. I said, ahead, Boy, Paula ahead. is something else, baby. She's been laying hands, honey, all up and down. <laughs> Go, Paula. <laughs> she said, Get up. Get up. Live. That's what I'm gonna tell y'all. That's what she was speaking to. There are all types of things telling them to live. <laughs> I'm just saying. Now, he had, a <laughs> more, he had more product in his head than her. And you know he had all them fillers and Botox going on, so it was something interesting about the way he was holding that microphone. Happy Pride Month, y'all! But uh, I am just that's right. Happy Pride Month. Happy, Happy Pride, Pride Month. All just tied. It's, it's a great I'm month. Just that honey, he has poured all the tea. He the did. Angels have spoken. Okay, and that's the last answer. Oh, I mean, but you know, people may not know the story, but we'll let them go look it up. Even though he said that. That was Paula who told him to come on and say we were getting a divorce, but it was really her all along. And that's what she does is manipulate people. But the girl, the white girl can hoop though. Mm. That's how I believe that right there. Um, look, going back, didn't you say that it was Black Music Month? So that's- then she goes, she about to start flickering them lights. I said the white girl can hoop. <laughs> 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 You better leave that girl alone. The black men seem to like her for some reason, honey. Uh, okay. I know, right, Kimberly? Not really sure why, but y'all, okay, so let's talk about Joe. Can we talk about, oh, you want to talk about one more thing before we get to Joe Manchin, before we get to serious stuff. Let's talk about, you want to talk about some culture? Yeah, you, can talk about, you can talk about Joe Manchin. You can talk about Joe Manchin, who, who has to stand very close to the urinal. That was hella funny. Okay, so anyway, uh, <laughs> Citizen Natural, you all know today, this clown, this man who's supposed to be a senior statesman, he's out here saying that if he supports for the people act, then that will further divide the country. Now, I'm not sure what country he's living in because if you don't support the for the people act, you've just divided black and brown people from really the bulk of them for fooling with you because you've really told us we don't matter in your book because how can you sit there and say that and play with them because if the tables were turned they wouldn't have thought once or twice about rounding up and whipping their members to get in shape and to in every type of filibuster there was let let the tables turn we we saw what happened with that supreme court nomination so i'm not feeling him right now. And I do think what we need to do is we need to, first of all, focus on those states that even if they have a Republican senator, where the majority of the people, a good bit of the people may be 
black or brown or Democrats where we might can sway them to come our way a little bit as opposed to Joe Manchin in West Virginia who knows you know what his demographics look like he he may be harder than some of those people that may be like say in Adam Chicago Arizona you know we gotta look at we gotta look at these numbers and see where they are but I am over Joe Manchin anybody that's over Joe Manchin other than me he can go ah. Cause you know he does go sometimes with the Democrats. Sometimes he also voted with the Trumpers. Come on, Kimberly, what you think? Shawnee says his state supports Trump. Well, tr he is the senator, so which shows us that he really does not care about the people collectively. He only cares about West Virginians because if he cared about the people collectively, I'm talking about us now. I'm talking about black and brown people, mostly black people because I'm black today. Mm -hmm. Then he wouldn't worry about keeping his seat. As opposed to doing the right thing, this is why black people in general usually are the moral compass of whatever legislature that they're in. Because sometimes, most times, like we said last week or the week before, we will we will do stuff for other people that they won't reciprocate. Yeah, for us. That's true. Because we know how to do the right thing. That's true. That's true. But the, but you just said something, D. You said that he represents West Virginia. So in his mind. He is he's representing his people. Are we in West Virginia? No, but had, had we not elected a, 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 a Warnock and an Alsop, we would have even had a stimulus package just go around. So don't give me good time. Yeah. We wouldn't even have a plan. What are you talking about? Remember, we went four years with no policies, no I'm just plans. saying what I'm saying. Now we're trying to get an infrastructure plan and they don't want to budge on an infrastructure plan. Come on. That's because they're devilish. And, and Manchin just swears we're going to get one. Yeah, at what cost? Because they're not adding any money to it, Senator Manchin. Don't try to jet our mind trick because we already know what that money is. It's, it's mostly money that was already earmarked for other things. Yep. Yep. Um, you all just want to, you and your girlfriend, uh, uh, Liz, what, what's the, South Carolina? Um, yeah. Yeah, you know. uh, the one. Y'all yeah, know. Who she is. Oh, you're talking about Kristen Cinema of Arizona? Yeah, I'm talking about South Carolina. Lindsey Graham? Lindsey Graham. So Lindsey Graham, they said, well, yes, uh, we're going to give uh, President Biden a, uh, a gift. Oh, what you, what you say? <laughs> I just said happy Pride Month. Since you That's what I'm saying, your girlfriend. I can't think of the name. Lindsey Graham. <laughs> Well, you know yes. that. You know, well, remember, uh, remember the um, yeah, high power, well, male escort um, when they, you know, were dropping that tea on our U.S. Senate. You know, they his code name was Lady Graham. That's all I got. But anyway, he basically said that he sees an infrastructure package deal coming. Mm -hmm. And all it requires is for Biden to come down a little bit on the cost. And there's that. They already did that. So now, you don't need to come down a little bit more, honey. We don't need to come down no more. Don't come down no more. They just need to go on and do the vote. And they're just... not really concerned about the infrastructure of this I mean, country. So no, it's, and, and the and Anoa Shanga, who is a really good friend of all of ours, who's an amazing writer for The Root, The Grio, and, and um, Kathy Hughes's, as we're talking about Black Music Month, um, News One, has written an amazing article today where she actually talked to African Americans in West Virginia about their relationships with Joe Manchin. And what a lot of people don't know is that one of the reasons why, first of all, Joe Manchin Mansion. There are only 70,000 black people in the whole state of West Virginia, uh, a state whose population is only 4 million people, which is actually, that's a fewer number of people living on the island of Manhattan in New York City. That's less than um, all of the people currently residing in Metro Atlanta. So, you know, when we're, I mean, I know, I, she, you see her. You see her. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's Miss Carter. 
Now next week, now next week, y'all won't be seeing her because I will be uh, <laughs> I, I will my, my my place in Peachtree Corners. So you know, I don't, y'all won't see her walking by. I you love may, her. You you may see a gorgeous chocolate bar walk by, but you won't be seeing her walk by. Ooh, but anyway, okay. Um, um, uh, heat up the screen, heat up the screen. Yeah. But um, but this Joe Manchin, like I said, there, you know, there are only seventy thousand African Americans living in the state of West Virginia. West Virginia has some amazing Black history. But I'll put the link in 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 this chat later because she has written just an amazing article. And so, you know, back to what Dr. D is saying about these people, you know, who are they listening to, who they respect. Um, Kristen Sinema is a Democratic U.S. Senator, as well as um, um, as well as Joe Manchin, both being Democrats, but they do not feel like they have to answer to Black voters because their constituents don't have Black, you know, don't have a large population of, of Black voters. So that's, you know, that is one of, you know, that's one of the challenges, you know, elections have, you know, ha- have consequences. But um, Dr. King warned us about this filibuster. We know that it is part of the segregation movement. It's part of Jim Crow. Um, it has no place in a civil society. It is not a law. I think that a lot of people don't realize it's not law. It's not in the Roberts Rules of Order. It's not parliamentary procedure. It is a special little quirky little mulligan that the, for my golf friends out there, that the U.S. Senate has created. And that was to deal with the thing they always have to deal with, and that is Black folk and our liberation. That's why the filibuster was created. Mm. 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 Well, true. And be, and so what your, do we do? So how do we tap? How do we tap? What can you do with Joe Manchin? Like people been asking me that all day. I don't know what you do with him. I mean, you guys well at this point. You might have voted Republican at this point. Who I mean, I don't care. I mean. Well, and then also, here's the other challenge that we have with, with Manchin. Um, he is actually in his six-year term right now. So, you know, his last election was in 2018. And, um, and, and you know, and to be frankly honest with you, um, he had a very small margin of a win with the Republican in 2018. I think he had like 49%. And the other guy was like at 48%. So, I mean, so, you know, even if he's looking down the road to the future, he knows, you know, that, there, that there's trouble coming that way. But can I just make one little culture note since we're listening to When Doves Cry? Um, you know, we lost a, a, an amazing actor over the weekend, 81-year-old Clarence Williams III. Um, he played Prince's father in um, in When Doves Cry. Um, he was also in The General's Daughter. Um, he was in a few Spike Lee movies. I think one of my favorite portrayals of him was when he played like a Black Panther leader in I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. Remember, he was the holdout. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We went down there to march on the government building, and all them Negroes went in. We went in the building. I came out, and they all stayed in and got jobs. It is one of the funniest scenes um, in, in the film. Um, I'm going to get to such a, I'm a big fan of all weigh-ins. I love all weigh-ins. Mar- I mean, I love every weigh-in. But, um, but yeah, um, Clarence Williams III, we speak your name today. We speak your name. Thank you, sir, for all of the amazing um, acting and, and portrayals that you gave us over the years. Thank you for that and for reminding us and celebrating who he was. We appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so are we going to talk about, um, you want to talk about P, a party at PDD hosted that you mm. had to school me on today that I was I like, know, right? <laughs> What the heck? No, no, no. Keep talking. I think you. We were supposed. Uh, no, I'm. I'm gonna let you talk about serious stuff. I'm not gonna be over here. No, no. no. It was something. I mean, we 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 mixing it up, honey. The, yeah. the pop culture, the you know, culture, culture for the culture. With you know, remember this is black. Is. This is black music month, anyway. So let's do it. Can we have a dance break? Oh, we're about to get us in trouble. Ow! Oh. See, see, this is what 
what happens when you come to black girl chit chat and then people are going to say something is wrong with those black women. Hey. 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 Nothing. We're just celebrating our blackness on Black History Month. Black, yeah. history, black history music. Black history. What is it? Black music history month. All of that. Yeah. Okay. So we only have 15 minutes. So what are we going to do in our last 15 minutes on the show? This, this is what happens when you have black women. Yeah. <laughs> Alexa, okay. Stop. So, okay. On a serious note, on a serious we're gonna move. We're, we're shifting. I want yes. you to tell me since you played the music because music leads to uh, wow. other great music. So Prince, you know, he laid the foundation. Him, Michael Jackson, others for music of today, this genre. So tell us a little bit about P. Diddy and this party. Oh my goodness. Um, you know, I'm just gonna tell you, literally mm -hmm. um, every, uh, Sean Combs came down um, to Atlanta to throw a birthday party for P who is the co-CEO of Quality Control Music. And so we're saying, and, and so it's P and, and Coach K. And these two brothers have literally, um, I mean, number one, um, they are just musical geniuses. They are finding talent all over the state. Um, if you go on Billboard, um, the top 10 on hip hop is all their artists. So when you hear Lil Yachty, Lil Baby, uh, the Migos, Dub, I mean, all of these folks. I mean, they are even responsible for, for um, uh, Bodak Yellow, for Cardi B. So this whole sound um, that's in uh, hip hop music now, you know, the whole culture, the city girls, all of that um, is, is from, you know, uh, their, their company. And um, and they are just, you know, they are amazing. Um, all of this, I know you guys saw all of the concerts that we were doing with some of the top artists um, uh, during the election and during the runoff. That was because of them. Um, they were just sending us all of their artists. I mean, they were just dumping. I'm talking about, you know, guys who are $400,000 for a 30 minute concert. They were like, here, take them, use them for free, use their Instagram, whatever you guys have to do to get this vote out, to vote this orange man out. And so it was just so amazing, you know, um, this past week to see, I mean, it was like the black Grammys were in Atlanta last week. I mean, it was the party of the literal decade and it was his birthday party. Um, and so, I mean, DJ Colin, I mean, everybody, you know, what was over there and, and in town, Tiana Taylor, um, uh, Issa Rae, I mean, just everybody was 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 down here um, celebrating his birthday and just celebrating how much of a cultural influence they are. And I know, you know, people don't like the mumble rap and people don't like, you know, some of the, you know, some of the culture that comes from, you know, from, from the culture of, of that music. But um, Lil Baby, who is from Atlanta, who's one of the number one artists in, in the world, um, met with Kamala Harris. Um, the other week, right, about qualified immunity. So they're about to put some of their money into this qualified immunity fight and wanting to get the Justice for George Floyd um, Act passed. So, I mean, I just thought it was just so amazing. Um, and I'll share, you know, the video in, in the chat of just how beautiful everyone looked. And you know how we talk about, you know, what the kids are wearing and, the, you know, and all this kind of thing. Well, for this party, um, uh, Sean Combs was like, everybody got to come in black tie. Everyone has to be in formal attire. So all of the women were in these gorgeous gowns and, you know, and all of them. Usher was there too. Um, uh, Jermaine Dupree. I mean, all of them, you know, all of uh, Two Chains. I mean, just the list goes on. And they were all there to celebrate. And, you know, they were all dressed to the nines, um, you know, pulling up in, in all kinds of amazing vehicles, um, just showing, you know, that, that, that Black folk can, um, can, can just, you know, all flying in their own planes. So I, I'm just glad that they are on our side. Well, me too. I'm, I'm just glad they're on our side. 
they are on our side. And guess what? And well, just thank you for sharing that with us. Well, let me, let me go and drop this the last T. And they will all be down here on June 10th for um, Kasim Reed's birthday party because Kasim was also there too. So he is their choice for mayor of this city. So they will all be there for his birthday party. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I assure you that Kasim Reed will not have a fundraising problem. Wow. Well, he never has. So and never has. That's right. And you know, and I don't have any comments on that. that. And he's an amazing business. fundraiser. I mean, he's my an amazing business. fundraiser. He was yeah. one of Kamala Harris's um number one bundlers. So, you know, we give brothers credit where credit's due. Go, brother. I I don't have a problem with Kasim. So we're gonna move right on to the next thing. And when anybody <laughs> coming on here messing with us, we you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming. They're right they were coming. They were mad at me last week. They were mad at me last week. So they may be mad at me this week. Wasn't nobody mad at you. <laughs> they were mad at me about that bonnet thing, girl. Oh, that bonnet oh. thing. Girl, yeah, that bonnet thing. It's, it's like it's taking on a life of itself with that bonnet thing. Like, if I see one, I'm over the but I am. Listen to me. I am uh -huh. over those bonnets. If you want to walk outside and be a bonnet head, then be a bonnet head. Yeah, right. I cannot every day talk about these doggone bonnets because people going to do what people going to do. People going to walk out sometimes with they all their butt out. Some people going to walk out some days with all their breasts out. Some days people going to walk around with bonnets on their head. And we going to talk about them too. So I'm just saying if you want to be a bonnet head, be a bonnet head and be the best bonnet head you can. That's all I got for you today. Right. Well, you know, Monique has another clap back. Yeah, what she posted a clap back on. She posted a clap back on yesterday. So, what um, is this one about? The bonnets? I'm um, trying to get at her. Great thing about the bonnets. Yeah. Well, you know what? You know what? I just she she talk time. about it. Monique came out of love. I really do. Even though when she came on, she had on a robe herself. But you know, she was at her house minding her business. But um. <laughs> This whole airport thing and this bonnet. I mean, I'm trying to understand. Like, I don't even know where you're going. But this is what happens when people are flying, as you, you know, you said, you know, you find flying spirit and jet blue and all those, you know. Please, you don't see people carrying on too bad like that on Delta Airlines, where I sit, where I fly. You know, we don't play around too much with all that body head stuff and all this. <clears throat> um, you know. You pay for your class of fare, and, and that's what you expect to see. And so I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick. Stay over here with Delta Airlines, but I don't see anybody getting on the plane with no dirty bodies on their head. Blue. Now don't be messing us up with JetBlue because they do sponsor um, a lot of, of African American businesses and things. So if they ever want JetBlue, if you can hear me and you want to sponsor Black Girl Chat Chat. One night, you are more than welcome to. We well, thank you. And Southwest to all of you all. But I can assure <laughs> you, they won't be getting on Delta Airlines. <laughs> That's right. With the bodies. No more. I'm just saying. I, I, yeah, I, I'm just really uh, flabbergasted. But we're going to move on because you know what? Kimberly did say something last week that was true. You know, we do police black women by we police yeah. black men by we police each other when our clothes don't look right and people will say now nah, she don't have any real friends because who let her come out of the house looking like that that's just what it is it is what it is i mean we're gonna talk about you because you you don't you do have um a tire that's supposed to be on in the house so i'm go d doctors hagley is going to go do better just do better <sighs> well, i can't mess with y'all this week you get a pass because right now this week we have to focus on voting <laughs> and, the, and the protest that's at the Capitol tomorrow, this week. Let's see how many people show up at the Capitol tomorrow night on their head at the protest rally. Because they show up, I'm going to give them a good shout out. I'm not even going to be rude. The fact that they came out in their bonnets to yeah. protest. That would be good. But you know what? It might be right tomorrow. Hell, let me get me a bonnet tomorrow. I might be wearing a bonnet tomorrow. See what I'm saying? The press conference. But, but let me say this. Yeah. One of the things that, that I am very happy about, and I know people get tired of me saying this, but yes, I am fifth generation AME. There is no American history without AME. And so um, so I am extremely proud of 
the presiding prelate of the 6th Episcopal District in the personhood of none other than Bishop Reginald Jackson, who has become the voice of this age, mm -hmm. has become the voice of this age. Mm -hmm. And so to the same folk talking about the bonnets, they're the same people always talking about preachers and specifically mm. black preachers. Say so what you are notice today, you mm. can't keep saying black church don't do anything no more. You can't keep saying that black preachers are taking a back seat to the issues of our time anymore. Mm -hmm. Because Say in it. this fight, in this fight, mm -hmm. it has been the black clergy who have been standing alone by themselves mm -hmm. in the tradition of the SELC and Dr. Mm -hmm. King and Fred Shuttlesworth and Dr. Lowry and C.T. Vivian and so forth and so on for such a time as this. That's right. Yeah, and we must support them. We need to support them. So I hope you all will be out there tomorrow at noon, correct? Do, do people even know about it? Because a lot of people tell them that tomorrow at noon. Even, even in some ways when I have not necessarily agreed with the path. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I haven't necessarily agreed with the path. Um, one thing is for sure, mm -hmm. and that is that they are standing flat-footed, unapologetic, for the cause of justice. Mm -hmm. And for that, we should all support them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and guess what? They will, they have a meeting with Joe Manchin. See, this is the power of the black church, right? Mm -hmm. They actually are meeting with Joe Manchin when they take the caravan up to DC. So they have several meetings with um with, with the US, you know, with the US senators. So I hope Bishop got a big bottle of oil in his pocket because it's going to take a lot to rub down and change that demon. Uh -huh. hmm. I mean, a lot. So anyway, for those of y'all who are wondering about tomorrow, tomorrow, 12 o'clock noon, Georgia State Capitol, uh, there will be a rally protest to uh, talk about all of these archaic and very dangerous demonic voting restrictive laws. Mm -hmm. uh, voter restrictive laws, and then that's going to be leading up. It's going to be done simultaneously in different states, and then next week there will be a rally at the United States Capitol on tomorrow. So tomorrow, twelve o'clock noon, it would be great if you all could come. Uh, my goal is to be there. Uh, is that Liberty Plaza? Right? I will have a body on my head for the rain. It's Liberty Plaza, right? It's but Liberty it is Plaza. a rain bonnet. See, those a rain bonnet is appropriate for the rain. It's called a rain bonnet. <laughs> There's no such thing as airplane, airport. Oh, bonnet. so now all bonnets matter. Restaurant oh. bonnet. There are no bonnets to be worn on the inside. See, it's right. a rain bonnet so that the weather, inclement weather, will not mess up mm -mm. your hair. No. Did you get the right uh, place? First of all, y'all know I'm not. I don't know where it is. The rally? Yeah, it's going to be at Liberty Plaza. And they're What's taking the a park. capital. Well, I'm sorry, y'all. Be outside, outside at Liberty yeah. Plaza, outside the capital. Not yeah. inside the building, but outside the building. But if you get that it rains, we will be inside the building. So yeah. outside or inside, just come to the Georgia State Capitol, Liberty Plaza, across the street, mm. 12 o'clock. Mm hmm. Mm. And hopefully, you know. Okay. I, I, I'm glad she gave a shout out to Bishop Jackson. We have five minutes to go uh, okay. because I was going to actually give him a real shout out him and uh, for leading this. And then you have um, have Reverend Timothy McDonald. You have Pastor Jamal Bright and uh, Reverend Lee May, who have been the forefront, the leaders of this, you know, this entire movement. Those are the ones making the TV rounds um, in regards to this situation. You always know, y'all always got to say something, but I won't say it today because mm -hmm. I'm trying to be on my best behavior. Mm -hmm. 
And I'll be there tomorrow in support, in solidarity with my brothers. Mm -hmm. So now in his in his email, it's um, Georgia State Capitol, 262 Capitol Avenue, Southeast, um, June 8th, of course, 12 noon. Um, everyone is invited to attend. They're also having a caravan from the Home Depot on 4325 New Snapfinger Woods Drive indicator that will meet at 1030 a.m. and caravan over to the Capitol. So, I'm thinking about that, but I'm not sure yet. Schedule. Schedule. I see it. Well, you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so everyone is invited. I mean, even though the clergy are leading it, and you can certainly invite your pastors, ministers, evangelists. Everyone is invited. You know, uh, uh, imams, um, uh, rabbis. This mm -hmm. is at all faith leaders are invited to attend. Yep. And we want to see you in the place, if you can at all come. Because this is a serious issue, and it, it is not stopping right now. As a matter of fact, it seems like the Republicans are giving them up gas. So we have to, as they crank up, we've got to crank up too. We've got to stop being reactionary and right. being proactive um, when we are dealing with situations where people are trying to uh, suppress, oppress, depress, repress, and every other is our freedoms. I'm going to ask that we ask our okay, I'm going to do a call to action. I need a call to action that all the Asian American people come out and support us. I want um, all of the um, LSGP, LS, what is it? TGBDQ. Uh-huh. Is there much LGBTQ? What I'm getting at is we have to all come together on every issue. And this issue doesn't just impact black people, even though black people are leading it, but we need the support of all people. Just like we were reactive when the shots happened with the Asian community, which we uh, had this happen to us all our lives. We need everyone to come together. We need the Latino group. We need the Asian group. We need the Native Indians. Everyone that's Native in the Americans. Indigenous. Yes. The yeah. indigenous. Everybody needs to be at the Capitol tomorrow at noon. Standing as one. That's where the power is. Until we all start doing that for every issue, we're not going to make it. We can't do it for every other issue. We need to be together on every issue. And this issue impacts black and brown people wholeheartedly. That's my call to action. Well, the, 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 the laws are actually in place for right. black and brown people. I mean, let's right. just call a spade a spade. I mean, they're not doing right. this for anybody else but to keep all of us right. from voting. Therefore, exactly. it's imperative that all of us show up and it not be carried. Now, granted, we are the bulk of that, but mm -hmm. everyone else needs to realize that we are the reason that they're passing these archaic bills along right. with the Hispanic communities like in Texas and Arizona. We, we got we to gotta look at those places where they're really coming at us and, and see who they're targeting, who they're trying to keep um, mm -hmm. from the ballot box. That's right. And, and, so that and, 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 and I think that Teresa makes an excellent point about how these um, oppressive regimes, these oppressive state legislatures are not uh, being discriminatory in how they choose to discriminate. Because not only did we have all of these voter suppression bills at all these state legislatures across our nation, but we also had all these trans kids bills and then and then these critical race theory bills. I mean, so so you know, it, it's all you know um, a, a broad brush, mm -hmm. and and they have all decided whether, uh, you know, what Benjamin uh, Franklin had to tell his folks, either we hang together or we be hung together, right? And so, and so whether we think we are separate or not, clearly the enemies of our progress think we are right. together because they right. got us all lumped up. Um, That's right. together. 
and 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 the door that 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 Vernon Jones and Kelvin King and Vivian Childs thinks that's swinging open for them, yeah, mm. is a trap door. Yes, it's a trap door, and mm. I'm not talking about a trap museum like <laughs> over there on um, Bankhead. Right. It's a trap right door. It's a they trap. Right into some quick that's thing. Right. It's poly tricks, right? Yeah. You know. So yes. All All that. So, so yeah. let me do this real quick. Sharnita said an Asian hate crime bill was passed. Where is the one for black folk? And I think that's what Teresa talked about some, and we try to touch on that a little bit. Then here goes my mother. Uh -oh. She knows she got to chime in. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Dr. Buck, she says, right. And the Asians didn't have to march or protest to get their hate crime bill passed. Well, okay. Yes, and um, then Shanita's backing my mother up. That's where we are today. Okay, so we have to hurry and get off of here because they got to get started, and we are not doing that tonight. Um, Dearly beloved, we <laughs> <laughs> get to the swing call life. See, yes. what I'm talking about. Do you see what I'm talking about? My black girl chit chat. Well, y'all, we have one. We have one minute, two minutes. Yeah. What do y'all want to close out on? Oh, is that our closing? Is that it? Yes. You can always see the sun. Yes. Oh, night. So when you call up that shrink in Beverly Hills, you know the one. You know the one. Got the everything be all right. This is what I'm doing here. So. I take it that's our closing for tonight. So we thank you on behalf of Carolyn Carter and Teresa Hardy, our D Dog is Hagler, for our 10th episode. Y'all give it up for us. This is episode 10 of Black Girl Chit Chat. I don't. Are we coming back tomorrow? Because next Monday, I will be in with Mickey Mouse. Uh oh. But then again, the week before last, I was in. Dominican is still did it, but just let me know what we're doing next week. We'll see y'all again. It's been great fun. We love you all. Please share it. Um, oh Lord, <laughs> listen. Why does Shani say, uh, Mama Peggy, tell them to tag us when they come on because we need all of our time. Oh, oh okay then. I'm almost afraid because y'all be right here playing with Kimberly and Carter, and she gonna have us uh <laughs> band it. <laughs> it's gonna be a Facebook jail. That's what we're gonna be. It's gonna be a Facebook jail. Uh -huh. But she was really good today. We appreciate you with your fancy popping lips and yes. color. Well, you know, I have a DJ at all of my events. So <laughs> you guys have been to my events. I have my own DJ. Yeah, we love you though. We love you. Y'all gotta catch one of her events. And so we'll talk about that on another day. It's been yeah. real. We appreciate you all and come back next week for we love you. thank you, Felicia, for coming in every week. Liz, uh, Liz T. Nelson Harris said, get your groove on. So thank you again. We appreciate you all. Until next time, Black Girl Chit Chat is out. Oh.